Welcome to I Am Goddess Collective Podcast, a sacred space for empowerment through modern magic, spiritual activism, and reclaiming your power. I am your host, Nixie Marie, feng shui practitioner, earth activist, and mystic here to support and inspire your journey in becoming the change you wish to see in this world. That change starts within. Join myself and fellow thought leaders, metaphysical experts, and luminaries each week as we explore practical and magical ways to living in your highest alignment. Your journey as an empowered goddess begins here. Let's dive in. Well, hello, beautiful sisters. Welcome back to another episode of I Am Goddess Collective Podcast. We are sitting with our lovely resident astrologer, Mimi Trong. She is in the house today to bring us up to the stars and tell us what is in store for November. Hey, Mimi. Hi, Nixie. How's it going? I'm great. Very excited for fall and to dive into November. Yeah, I can't believe we have two more months in this entire year. Yeah. And I remember our first podcast talking about 2019 and all this Saturn and Capricorn energy. And now we're at the end of the year already. Know, we've been doing this for a year now, like consistently. <sighs> Did we start think, in January? I think we started in 2018. That's right. Or the end of 2018. Because I remember us doing the uh, forecast of 2019. Hmm. And we're approaching the end of 2019, and soon we're going to prepare for 2020. <laughs> yeah, 2020 feels like it's going to be huge and massive, and like we're all being prepared for this up level that's happening. I don't know about you guys, but it uh, it really feels like something big is coming, like the Roaring Twenties or something. You know, back at it. So uh, I hope you guys are all prepared. I'm, I'm not quite prepared yet. Actually, the word prepared keeps coming up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we might get into that on the show, but let's, uh, let's hear what we have for November, Mimi. Yeah, it's a powerful month, uh, mostly because if you really think about all this entire year, Pluto and Saturn has been in Capricorn, and now the sun has moved into um, Scorpio. So there's a lot of dynamic between Scorpio and Capricorn. Like those two energies work really well together. So it invites us and it gives us this energy and this ability to move things with greater ease and to accomplish Mm. because, you know, Scorpio is super intense and then Capricorn is all about goals and accomplishments. So it really helps each other. So I think if, anyone is listening and either either a Scorpio or a Capricorn or any water sign or um, earth sign could take advantage of this energy that's coming through the entire month of November, especially the first half of November. I think that, mm. you know, it's, a, it's a, a great energy to use as we're coming to the end of the year. And if you're thinking, oh my gosh, what had just happened with the year? This is a great time to go, okay, I'm just going to go for it. So overall, in a nutshell, mm. I think that this it would be a really good month to, you know, before the Thanksgiving holidays, just give yourself a chance to... Yeah, the holidays. <laughs> just give yourself the chance to go, all right, what's left on my list of things that I've put off? Or you might feel that surge in that energy to just go go balls out because that's how Scorpio rolls. (laughs) Yeah, definitely like balls out. (laughs) Well, Capricorn for me has been always, uh, you know, we're in Capricorn. We're going into, so November is Scorpio. Scorpio. And then Capricorn. Well, the Capricorn is the, uh, after it would be Saturn. Right. I mean, not Saturn. Sagittarius. Sagittarius. I'm like, no, my brain is. What about me? (laughs) What about me? (laughs) It is not Capricorn season yet. Hold on. No, no, no. It's just the the Pluto and Saturn in Capricorn are still very staying powers. And the aspects of Scorpio with Capricorn works well. So use that to your advantage. And then, yes, the second half of November, the sun will move into um, Sagittarius. And so will some of, I think, mm, I can't remember, I have to take a look at my notes, but there's going to be planets moving into Sag as well. But a big chunk like Venus, 
Mars, Mercury, and we're going to have obviously Mercury retrograde in November, which starts um, Hmm. officially if you live in the Pacific time zone, um, starts officially on Halloween on October 31st is when Mercury turns retrograde. Oh, great. And it stays with us until um, November, let's see, it's November 20th, 20th yeah. um, at 12, 11 p.m. on the West, like a Western time zone. Okay. So um, so it's a, that's a, what, two-thirds of November. So in some ways it's, it sounds conflicting because earlier I said go balls out, but then Mercury retrograde sometimes feels like it's pulling us going backwards. It's asking us to slow down. So it's, there's that, that beautiful balance of reflecting and then taking action, reflecting. And sometimes it's, it's, just take risk. And this is a really good month to take risk um, in November is, you know, Scorpius is fearless. Um, Capricorn is very clear about the direction it's going. So be open to making mistakes because this is the one time where you have those, you know, energy of moving you forward and then Mm. checking in and say, oh, this is not working and reflect and then say, let's try something else. Yeah. And Scorpio is very resilient. It's It doesn't let failure stop them. So, you know, and that this is great for people who want to be perfect is that there's no perfection. There's only trial and error. So yeah. this is a really good energy to say, you know what? I've been meaning to do this. I've not done it. Let's get started and just try fail and try something else. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, Scorpio to me always reminds me of like a lot of sex energy too, like (laughs) super sexual. It's like the most sexual sign of the Zodiac, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's sexual because it rules the sexual production organs. Um, and okay. So let's, let me clarify why Scorpio rules <laughs> Please do sexual <laughs> energy. Scorpio rules um, merging of resources. Okay. And when you really think about two people coming together and merge on a physical level, right. that's sex. But then there's, but Scorpio doesn't just go for the sex. Like evolve and elevate it, Scorpio go for intimacy. Mm. And for Scorpios who are evolved and conscious, they find tremendous um, aliveness in the power of the sexual energy in coming together with another human being in an intimate level to experience the exchange of energy. So from a spiritual standpoint... When those two people come together and merge passion and intimacy, what happens is you get to create another human being. And that's powerful when you really think about from nature standpoint, from spiritual, a spiritual standpoint is it's a miracle to bring another human being into life. So it requires that intense energy. So that's really the real energy of Scorpio. It's the intimacy, the 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 exchange of energy, the passion, mm. and the creation that comes from that. Mimi, I think you're going to get pregnant in, Scorp- <laughs> in Scorpio season. <laughs> well, that's the plan. <laughs> I know. I was like, well, I think that that's what I, I just keep pushing on on her because we've been talking about it and feng shuiing her house a little bit to prepare mm-hmm. for that. Mm-hmm. So um, that's just what came through. Mm-hmm. We'll see, but I'm pretty sure that was an intuitive hit, I think. Yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I am feeling into the Scorpio energy. You know, it's always interesting because towards the end of the year, uh, I often feel like, you know, a little like just feeling like, okay, there were some stuff that I didn't really accomplish, right? And it's not like guilt, but it's just more of like, Maybe failure is a good word. Mm. Um, Just feeling like, okay, you know, there was some stuff that I wanted to get done. But then again, it's like I work best in my 11th hour. And of course, procrastination is like 
you know, it's a thing. It's a thing that we all do. But I think that that what you're really saying is that it's an opportunity to really like push through mm-hmm. that 11th hour of this year of like, OK, what not in a way that doesn't serve you, but really in a way that's like, OK, you guys like 2020, we've got uh, presidential candidates that are women up for de- up for running like that's a very real thing that could happen. And that would mean that we as a society get to embody like what that's going to look like and be prepared for it. So I think that there's just this, um, no matter where you are, like whether there's been a goal that you wanted to accomplish or, or something that was on the to-do list that didn't get done. Uh, I love that there's this, this Scorpio energy coming forth for us to push through that. Yeah. It's really nice. Um, I'm very excited and, uh, it's very powerful. I, I looked at the, all the transits and, you know, sometimes some people might be looking at it and be so afraid because it's powerful when the sun, um, Mercury and then Venus moving th- into Scorpio and then, and, con- um, and aspecting Saturn and Pluto, which are very big, powerful planets. It's like, it can be scary, right. uh, but it's through that pushing through that fear and pushing got to be very clear it's not don't force it you know there's that fine line of being committed to what you set your mind to and still go for it despite the fear of well what if it didn't work out and then there's the other side of um you know so you know so afraid of it and and just be paralyzed by it Mm -hmm. um it can't it can go it can go that down that path um and then it's sometimes it's not going through in the masculine way it's like i'm gonna destroy everything in in, and my path to just make it work and destroy relationships and stuff so it's not that extreme it's fine and i think maybe that's great that mercury is retrograding to allow us to be a little bit gentler yeah. and a little more aware and that's what scorpio brings in is the conscious awareness of oh that didn't work <laughs> so yeah. let's try something really different and to have that wherewithal of seeing and not making it wrong or and it's not judgmental scorpio is not the judgment it's like it's the willingness to get our hands dirty Yeah. And I I think that comes with two, you know, with retrograde season, it's always when we're being called to go within a little bit, you know, do those Mm -hmm. retrospects of our our life. And with Scorpio being here, it feels definitely a little confusing, but also it's almost like lighting a fire under our ass to Mm -hmm. actually do that Mm -hmm. versus like, neglecting or Mm -hmm. pushing the things that we don't want to look at and, you know, sweeping them under the rug, Mm -hmm. but really taking a look at, you know, the sensual side of life, the Mm -hmm. pleasure side of life, Mm -hmm. because that's, that's really what I think of Scorpio, you know, aside from the sexual sign, it's like, yeah, they bring pleasure with passion and ignite it and don't have a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. So Mm -mm. We've got to really embody that as as a whole collective here. Yeah, and Scorpio rules abundance. Abundance because it understands how to utilize its resources. Mm. So the polarity of Scorpio Taurus is all about resources. Taurus is personal resources and Scorpio is resources of other people. So um, Scorpio energy has the ability to recognize uh, the proper utilizing the proper resources to achieve the goals that it has set to do and create. And in that, they can create abundance. Mm. And um, and it also cr- it talks about, you know, it connects to finances. Um, so the ability to work hard and to create abundance, being fearless, and being clear about the commitment, not so much about the fear. Yeah. And then there's also the shadow side to Scorpio, Mm -hmm. like the, uh, you know, sort of stinger, the one that really gets you in the ass and sort of bites you and, and, you know, betrays you or Mm -hmm. something of that nature. And I think that the shadow side of everything is really important to look at Mm -hmm. because it reminds us that, you know, we, we don't need to be afraid of it. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because the other day I was actually in my laundry room and there was a Scorpio 
like really? scorpion. Scorpion. Yeah, there's a Scorpio. <laughs> oh, no, there's another Scorpio. <laughs> Watch out. He's hiding in my laundry room. <laughs> no, a scorpion was in my laundry room. I didn't even know they lived in Topanga. Topanga. <laughs> so I was like barefoot and like ran out. And then I was just like, wow, that was so cool, though, because, you know, I've heard that when you get stung, it fucking hurts. Uh-huh. But, you know, what interesting medicine that would be to experience. Mm-hmm. So um, with that stinger, they surprised, like it surprised me. I was, I wasn't ready for it, you mm-hmm, know? And mm-hmm. so I think that that might be this theme that we might see is like a little bit of being surprised. surprised. Yeah. It's the willingness to, <laughs> it's so funny. I, I was going to say prepare and it was like the yeah, word the for the, word. <laughs> the day. Um, the thing is with Scorpio is that they have, they've been willing to put themselves through so many things that it's not that they're more prepared. It's just that they've seen it or experienced so much that they're, and they can, they have the ability to see what's unknown or unseen. So it's not that they're more prepared. They're just, they've experienced so much that there's very few things that would surprise them when it would surprise other people. Um, and, and because they are so willing to go into the shadow work, they're not afraid of shadow work, right. um, that it's more like, well, kind of seen it, felt it, experienced all that crap and shit and all that stuff. So that if something does happen, it's almost like, oh, okay, well, how am I going to handle it? As opposed to, holy shit, what am I going to do? Yeah. So, and th- that brings back to resourcefulness is Scorpios are very resourceful because they're just so curious and so willing to do whatever it is that they're like, okay, well, they will be able to connect to how to solve problems by, because they're so resourceful. And, um, but yes, certainly the month of, you know, end of October, beginning of November is do the dirty work. Let it, it's releasing a lot. I mean, this is why yeah. it's fall time. Um, yeah, it's shadow season. It is. Yeah. And and it's not it's, fun. It's sometimes. not fun, but it's powerful. It's super if you, powerful. It's yeah. it it comes with the territory. Yeah. And so you've just got to accept it and um rise from it. Rise. And you know, there's rise mul- up. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And there's many levels of consciousness because you were talking about revenge and that is a lower vibration of Scorpio uh, to operate in a revengeful way is because there's a lot of insecurity, Mm. but the Scorpio energy that is uh, conscious, aware, and have worked through and put in the work of breaking through those insecurities and those fears and be be willing to walk through the fire, then rise and be able to see, okay, revenge, what is that going to serve, right? Or on the other side of, you know, getting into the intimacy part and the powerful, you know, part of that connection with another human being and the human psyche and understanding other people to elevate um, is the ego part of Scorpio, not the, the scorpion is the lower part of Scorpio. Interesting. And then, I mean, there's also the snake, the snake, the scorpion and the eagle are the three animals related, connected to Ah. Scorpio energy. So it depends on where you are at in terms of your vibration Mm -hmm. energetically to, to, to be in nature. Like really, if you think about those animals, how they hunt and how they navigate the world, you know, the scorpion has a protection because it's tiny. It it needs that venom to protect itself. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it can get attacked. Then the snake has that skin that regenerates. That's why Scorpio is connected to regeneration. So Scorpio mm. people have a powerful ability to regenerate. So they, that's why they can work really, really hard. And then they can recover and then start all over again. Wow. So it's like death and rebirth. Yeah. That is exactly what Scorpio represents. It's the transformation process where there's a death and then there's a rebirth of something else. The and, eagle flying high. Yes. And then... Wow. The then the eagle 
is be able to, it's the spirit part mm. of Scorpio energy. Wow. So um, it's dignified, it's um, regal, it's, you know, it can see all. Yeah, so, well, it's, so like the, it's like the highest flying bird in the sky, I believe. Mm -hmm. And the natives really spoke and utilized the eagle as such a big metaphor for everything that they really believed in and that the eagle would come and share their medicine or the mm -hmm. stories from the higher beings mm -hmm. of this of the world, a God source, whatever, you know, you want to call it. But yeah. um, wow, that's really fascinating. I actually had no idea anything mm -hmm. about. Now I'm really excited for Scorpio season because <laughs> I feel like it's like I actually you know, being in this space of self-work, being in this space of being a witch, a mystic, a, you know, ugh, wise woman, whatever you want to call yourself, like it is a constant inner outer journey of this, you know, light and dark and mm -hmm. light and dark and shadow and light and all of that. So I, I've kind of found a, a new place of acceptance with it. And I was even driving this morning thinking, why are we so afraid of the darkness? Mm -hmm. Like, why are we so afraid? Because I often get, you know, uh, the other day I was chatting with a um, a friend of a friend, Cameron's friend, who we got together with him. She's like a YouTube star. And we were talking about, you know, content creation. And and I said, you know, oh, we talk about the path of the witch and the craft and all of that. And her immediate response, which most people are if they haven't really done some deep subconscious work around that word, was like, oh, but that's not positive. That's Is that positive? Like, isn't that evil? Mm. You know, and I once thought the same thing. But what is so powerful about that in itself is like I was thinking, you know, but why are we so afraid of the evil side? You know, they, they, it still serves a purpose. You know, it teaches us about fear. It teaches us about how to navigate those fears. And it teaches us how to, you know, really rise above mm -hmm. that shadow. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of become a little, as, as in, in my path, really okay with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. these transformations and the death and rebirth cycle mm -hmm. because when you are living in alignment and in harmony with nature, then mm -hmm. you are you're one with it and nature doesn't have like one cycle and season. Mm -hmm. That's, that's mm -hmm. not it. You Correct. know, she's got all these seasons. Yeah. And if you really are connected to nature and mother earth and you truly understand the cycle of life, death is a necessary part of life. It, it goes hand in hand. Yeah. So, uh, I think it depends on the culture that you live in that darkness and death uh, is being interpreted as negative and bad and sad. Yeah, of course, there's a sadness. I'm not saying that I'm just cold and saying, well, hey, that's just the <laughs> process of <laughs> that's life. That's just life. You're dead and you're gone. <laughs> yeah. But there, there's, of course, the human side of uh, us that feels the sadness of a loss of a loved one, but also the acceptance that that is part of the cycle of life, that life cannot exist without death. Mm -hmm. um, and... And, and just looking at the season, the fall, the leaves will fall because that's the necessary part of it. And, and, but it's just a different form. That's why we call it transformation. It's, right. it's, it's just a, another way of transferring a, that form into something else for a different purpose. So the leaves fall on the ground, but then it becomes nutrients and it, it, it decomposes itself and then goes into the soil and then enriches the, the roots so, and so that it starts another cycle in the spring. So it's not like it's going away. It's just changing form. Right. And it, and, it, and everything else, though, dies. Like the tree looks like it's dead mm -hmm. at that point. And you're like, oh, the tree died. But it's only on the outside, yes. but you don't see what's happening in the inside. Mm. And there's life in the inside. Yeah, mm -hmm. super powerful. So, I mean, just step outside in nature, I think, at this time. Fall is one of my favorite seasons. Again, I've said it, I don't know how many times. But it's just because I think that there's essentially that reminder of the cycle. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so easy to just bypass a lot of the cycles here in L.A. Um, those of you that are all over, you know, get to experience winter and the, the winter months. I uh, envy you in a little bit of ways. But <laughs> mostly just because it's like you get that experience 
experience of the wheel of the year really turning Mm -hmm. and seeing, you know, the leaves dry up and the snow come in and Mm -hmm. it being like white and everything. So it's, it's a very, you know, it's like the darkness comes in and then you got blasted with all the snow and the Mm -hmm. whiteness. Mm -hmm. So in winter, it's, it's very arid. It's cold, of, of course, but it's necessary when you think about resting, Right. So, I mean, I'm Hibernation sure. We'll, time. Yes. Yeah. And um, it's so funny. I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but as you were talking about cycling through the seasons and and I'm thinking, well, it's like the end of, and relationships are hard for a lot of people, right? Like there's a death and a physical death to mourn, but a lot of times we forget to mourn in a healthy way the end of a relationship. Mm. And we don't think about, we think that, oh, our world will end because a relationship ended. But I've always been the optimist of seeing, okay, well, that ended. That means there's something better for me elsewhere Mm -hmm. waiting for me. Um, And, you know, we've talked about in Libra season, it's all about relationships and partnership. It's more social, you know, and then (laughs) you move from Libra into Scorpio and it's like the deepening of a relationship. But sometimes it's the end of a relationship if that relationship doesn't work yeah and um it's part of our cycle of um finding our own self through the journey of relationships yep yep and truly the invitation for people to understand that there's a sadness and there's a grieving process but to see that there might there absolutely have to be someone out there that's better you know, right. that's waiting for you. So mm. to, the willingness to let go, which is a very scorpionic energy, is the releasing of to make room for something right. else. Yeah. Yeah. That, I feel like relationships, obviously, being the theme last month was a big one. You know, I, I definitely was looking at more of my friendship relationships and mm. just all relationships as a whole. I mean, um, and becoming more solid in my partnership and realizing mm. like, you know, there's ebbs and flows of that too. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like for us personally in our relationship, we're coming up on three years. So Mm -hmm. I always say like after threes, like shit gets real, you know, and it's (laughs) like, Oh, everything's been so fun and light and it's been like so great. But then, you know, there's been some moments where it's been like, okay, like that was actually kind of challenging to navigate in the Mm -hmm. communication or the way I'm feeling or Mm -hmm. the way I have these expectations, which you and I kind of both talked about before we started recording. And so I think it's just, you know, all in all, like really remembering that it's important to have those check-ins with ourselves about these things like relationships or um, the Scorpion energy of the Scorpio energy of like passion and pleasure Mm -hmm. and navigating through those, those elements. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, like, what do you feel like you're currently working through and what will you see kind of, you know, being your own little fortune teller? Like what, what do you see for yourself in in this month? I'm a Scorpio. Other than getting pregnant. I'm a Scorpio. Oh, so, so you really know. You really up. know all about it. <laughs> all about the Scorpio. Where are all the Scorpio sisters at? Yeah, and so I've always embraced uh, that cycling. Um, you know, it's like uh, I was when I was young, when I was seven, I really, really wanted to go into fashion mm. because there's always something fresh and new. Yeah. Every season, it's like it's like when you go shopping, it's like oh, spring co- collection, summer collection. Yeah. So I I I saw that as fun. Yeah. Um. So I'm I'm never afraid of changing seasons. I yeah. embrace it so much, and sometimes a little bit too much because, um, I get I got to learn through my life to stay steady because constantly recycling, letting go, renew. At some point, it's like, where's the stability in that, right? So for me, that was one of my greatest lessons is to find that anchor. Uh, But certainly for Scorpios and what I'm working through, and I was just talking to someone yesterday or two days ago about how change and growth, growth is not easy it's not it's very uncomfortable but it's when you're uncomfortable that you know 
that you're growing. And so this has been, this whole entire year has been very uncomfortable for me. Mm. Um, and I think something happened. Oh, Jupiter had entered um, Sagittarius last year on my birthday and Jupiter is going to exit uh, out of Sagittarius and into Capricorn next month. So we're going to talk about it for our next podcast. Yeah. But um, everything has been very expansive for me, mm -hmm. uh, but it also has been very uncomfortable because yeah. I've this year more than ever before, because the thing is with me, because I've been doing astrology since I was nine, I've always been in that process of self-exploration and development. So it's not new. So, But right. this year, it's been very new because I've finally allowed myself to stretch beyond my comfort zone. And my comfort zone is pretty wide. But now I've got to have to go beyond that. And it felt really, really hard. And I, I had to give myself that grace and knowing that sometimes there's no time on when that's going to end. It will yeah. end when I'm, I'm allowing it to move and unfold. So it's not like how long it's not like sometimes being pregnant it's like you have nine months of gestation and then then you know the baby comes out yeah. but <laughs> transformation doesn't have you know a timer no. on it you just gotta keep no going dates. until s somehow the membrane will you know break open and then you're 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 you you'll feel that rebirth so for me my journey this year has been and it's been in the last few years, but I think I got clarity this year is how do I bridge astrology with coaching? Because, yeah. and I think this year as I'm right now working on my own coaching program, I have an understanding of where does astrology end and begin with my coaching for me, right? Like if you can talk to someone else and it could look completely different for right. them totally. and that was very uncomfortable for me because it's and I've been sitting in that discomfort for I think over a year now and it's finally here but then now that I'm here I'm still also in the discovery of and in the discomfort of implementing it and, it, and now that I understand now it's like I have to develop it so that's also very uncomfortable totally get it <laughs> And then it's like, oh gosh, you know, you think that you've arrived to a certain point and then there's, but there's more, there's, there's always, always more. more. There's always more. And that's the thing. I love that you said that because I really believe like we think we know what we want mm -hmm. and then we get it. And then we are like, but wait, I want something else. And so it's almost like we really, really get to be in this practice of being, you know, in gratitude mm -hmm. right now. I'm, I'm doing a little bit of a gratitude challenge with myself because it's so important. You've got to be in a state of appreciation, trust the process. You know, we, we mm -hmm. before we even started recording, we talked a lot about, about the evolution of, you know, both of ourselves and mm -hmm. where we're going, what we're headed. And, and, and really, I think the, the first thing, like when I really just let it all go and take a deep breath, that word trust the process comes up. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that's kind of where we all get to be in mm -hmm. order to really realize like, Everywhere we arrive, we meet ourselves mm -hmm. over and over again, but then mm -hmm. we want more and we want more. And then it's like, but when is it ever going to be enough? Mm -hmm. It's never going to be enough unless yeah. we just accept mm -hmm. that this is the process of being human yep. and uh, letting go of that ego mind where the mind wants to come in and like play tricks on us and say, you know, oh, now you want that big fancy car. Well, now you want this and now mm -hmm. you want that. And then you're never really happy yep. because you're chasing something that isn't really like going to provide that level of soul fulfillment. Yeah. So being so present to what you're creating in that moment is the joy in of itself of that creation process. Right. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I have a squirrely mind. Like I'm like, Oh, I'm working on something. Oh, but this idea. Yeah. And I so always I. have to bring myself back to yeah. wait, I'm working on something very important now. Just stay focused. Yep. And I have to self-coach myself. I've, I've, I'm like a 
what self cleaning oven <laughs> of my you know where my mind does totally. plays trick on me like trying to distract me from what I'm creating and knowing that what I'm doing right now is important and to just be in recognition mm -hmm. and also gratitude that I can even have the chance to do this. Like I have the time to do this. I'm, you know, feeling into the present moment of that creation. Yeah. Um, because it, it, because sometimes it, yeah, it, when you create in, and you're great creating something great, it's uncomfortable. You want to run away from it and avoid it. And it's yep. staying in the, okay, keep reading that book or keep learning that or keep doing whatever it is like logistically. Yeah. And because it, it's just so much easier to go back to our old ways. Mm -hmm. It is so much harder to ride the transformation journey and to really step into the evolution of what we really want. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it doesn't come with a like playbook a manual mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't come with any of those guidance we are the guidance system we are the compass yeah and uh we've got to go within and I, I feel like you know I'm preaching to the choir here because it's it's where I'm at right now you know it's yeah. to really like do the sitting and doing mm -hmm. the listening and doing the internal you know knowingness of really where I want to go and what's next and mm -hmm. you know all that takes time mm -hmm. too it's like yeah. Letting go of that time conversation, I think, is important. Yeah. <laughs> and that's actually exactly what my coaching program is, how to break through the conversation of time and still achieve your goals despite the limitation of time and to use your time wisely and maximizing it. And But really looking at our behaviors that is gets us us in the way of creating within the time that we have. Yeah. Um, and I also wanted to bring up, um, there you were talking about, what was it that you're talking about? Oh, reflecting. Oh, m mentorship is what I want to talk about too, is, you know, Scorpio energy is all about y utilizing your resources. Sometimes we forget, like, yes, there is our own uh, internal wisdom that everything we have and we need lives within us and we have it already. Sometimes we just got to be willing to let go of our ego and reach out to people in our lives that have walked a path already and use them as resources and wisdom. It doesn't mean that we have to listen to them, you know, and take all the suggestions it's simply having knowing that you have resources to you know, bounce ideas or asking you know how did you do it how did you handle these kinds of conflicts and then be able to take that in and process for ourselves what would could work and use that as a resource and that's i think the beauty of scorpio energy is the willingness to be so committed to your success that it's not that you're willing to ask for feedback, for support, for mentorship, for advice, right? And using our, that resource to reflect on. Yeah. Um, so that's another thing that a lot of I think women yeah. <laughs> we don't go and ask for support at all. We think that we've got to deal with it and go. There's something. Yes, rewarding to be able to know that we've we've made it, but sometimes it's we make the road much harder by trying to do it alone when there's all this abundance and of resources around us. Mm. That's a big one, definitely a big one for I think a lot of us that uh, tend to play the lone wolf or tend to you know want to do it all alone. But at some point there is a breaking point. Mm -hmm. And I've definitely felt like up against that many times this year, you know, coming into my 30s, I've just felt like, oh, you know, there's a lot moving, there's a lot of moving parts. And, you know, it's a good reminder to check in to ask for support to mm -hmm. ask for the guidance and say, hey, you know what, I just need an opinion right now. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, someone to just bounce this idea off me. And that is why we have this podcast. You know, that's why we create this platform to come together in sisterhood. And I think that's really mm -hmm. where, you know, my my why is oftentimes is when I remember like how healing it is 
when we come together and we talk about these things and have this conversation. So, you know, if you're, if you're in that space where you don't really have a sisterhood or you, you know, you can create it, you can start a sister circle around you. If you feel like there's nobody around you, well, you've got to let go of that story because there's definitely somebody. Mm -hmm. And also we have the membership site, so you can join there on (laughs) IamGoddessCollective.com, obviously. Um, But you know, it's, it's just really, I think this Scorpio season, like it's going to be intense because then we have like you, you know, we're going to get into the hibernation stage Mm -hmm. and we're not really going to want to do a lot. Then Mm -hmm. it's going to be like holidays are going to come real fast. I'm actually traveling most of the month and going to Thailand. So I'm going to be like off, off. And that's my intention. But you know, it's like, we don't really, I don't want to be really working. I really believe that the whole world should take the entire of December off, honestly, (laughs) and also the summer. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but, uh, it's healthy. Yeah. I mean, you've got to remember that. So I think that's where this like November push is coming in. So. Yeah, I know. I, I just said, yeah, it's healthy to take vacation. But I'm like thinking, when was the last time I took a vacation? Yeah, my Mimi, <laughs> when was the last time? Uh, well, I did travel to New York uh, at the end of August. Did it that feel was like really a vacation? Good. It did. It was great. I allow myself to just not plan. I mean, honestly, it was my first time going out to Brooklyn. I've been to Manhattan, but going into Brooklyn was brand new. I got to explore and I didn't, you know, for a planner, I didn't plan. I just went with the flow. Like, I don't know which train, like usually I would plan everything ahead of time. At nine o'clock, you got to get on the train. We're going to Disneyland. Yeah. I I know exactly (laughs) where everything is. You know, yeah, um, yeah. Not Brooklyn. The part of Brooklyn that I stayed in was not Disneyland at yeah, all. No, no, I'm just kidding. There's um, no Disneyland in New York, guys. Sorry, <laughs> not yet, at least. But I'm learning to be in the flow that and trusting. I, I do these tests. Yeah, I, I test myself. I test new boundaries, and um, I'm learning to understand how I function if I didn't plan how would I handle things? Mm. So for example, I had a 4, 8, no, uh, my flight flew flying back to LA was at 7 a.m. I had no idea which train to take. I just decided I'm just going to take one train at a time and just ask the person at the end of it, okay, I want to go here, where, what do I need to take? So I didn't even plan at all ahead of time. I wow. just trust that I will have someone to guide me along the way and yeah. still make it on time. That's, that's important. It's important to test yourself yeah. that way. So, I, so that was my Did you my make test. it on time? I did. I, but it did take me four hours from the moment I woke up. I woke up at two in the morning. I arrive at the airport. Now granted my I flew out of New Jersey. Oh okay. So it was I was gonna far. say that sounds a little crazy. Um <laughs> but I, I got you were by yourself. I was by myself and I arrive at the airport at six AM and my flight was at seven something. Wow. Yeah. So I made Don't it but it, t- it took me a very long time. <laughs> yeah. That's a long time, four hours. But hey you did it. I did it. What did you break through? Uh trust uh, trust that I am resourceful and that there are people. Oh my gosh, there's these people. I mean, pe- okay, people think that people in New York are are awful, but they're so nice. Yeah, they are so willing to help you out. Mm. Um, yeah, that's good. I like that. Thanks for sharing that story. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah. Well, wow, we've got quite a bit uh, for November. I think there's uh, yeah, be and a then but, and in, also in month in November we're moving into Sagittarius yes. too. Um, well, I it's funny because we're both Scorpio and, and Sag, Sag, so we're already we know what <laughs> we already know what's going to happen, uh, sort of. But um, yeah, yeah, the the twenty second right, it yep. moves into Sagittarius, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and there's this. Um, quote that I found says, quiet the mind and the soul will speak. Mm. Quiet the mind and the soul will speak. Very uh, fitting for Sagittarius, right? You guys are the philosopher. So when your mind is quiet, your own personal truth will come through. Mm. 
that's why for you it's so important to just listen to your own self yeah um and also there is a a wild um full moon well there's a new moon uh at the end of november november 26 mm. so just before thanksgiving we have a new moon in sagittarius it's a quite interesting uh, new moon it has you know it <sighs> I don't know. It's like this sense of adventure and awe and wonder. And then there's, there's, I know there's going to be some surprise coming through because the new moon has a in conjunct, which is 150 degrees apart from uh, Uranus. So that's not a comfortable aspect. So there's definitely going to be a little jolt in the... Uh, adventure that sense of wonder and adventure and then there's going to be something that's going to show up that's going to be like oh wow did not see that thing coming and uh but certainly oh opening because uranus is very conscious opening Mm. um so you know for the new moon set your intention for Whatever adventures you're up for next. Ooh, yeah, I love <laughs> adventures, obviously. I'm a Sag. Yeah. Um, you know, what's funny that I was just reflecting on our conversation about uh, when we were talking about gratitude and appreciation, and it kind of brought me back to the realization that it's Thanksgiving, this time where we go into appreciation mm. and gratitude for mm-hmm. our friends, our family, our loved ones. And although I'm sure there's many of you listening that don't really, um, are, aren't super aligned with some of the ho- like you know, modern day holidays, but I I really do want to just presence and invite you to be in a place of gratitude this month. Um, we, I do have a gratitude challenge going on this month. So uh, I've joined up with another goddess. You can find more information about that on our, um, I am goddess collective podcast, Instagram page, but it's, it's a good time to do this gratitude practice and do 30 days of gratitude, you know, wake up every day, write in your journal, say what you're grateful for. And bigger than that though, like tell somebody why you're grateful for them. Um, I often, you know, write notes to my loved ones or my beloved just saying like, Hey, I'm really grateful for you for doing this. And honestly, you'll be surprised because gratitude for me really creates miracles. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was writing today, like why I, feel so empowered by gratitude. And I think ultimately it just has the power to really change your life Mm -hmm. in a way where you're not focused on everything that you don't have, Mm -hmm. but rather focused on everything that you have now, the people around you. And it starts to create this vibration around you where Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're sending out this wave and this frequency out into the universe where you're saying, yes, this is amazing. This is amazing. And then more is coming that way because you give like we, attract what we want and what we don't want Mm -hmm. so when we focus on that don't want Mm -hmm. it's there it's there Mm -hmm. so i really just want to invite you guys to um join that challenge find info more information on i am goddess selective podcast instagram and also just be in that place and mindset this month so yeah um i think subconsciously all my life i've really um practiced gratitude in a very quiet way i think that's how i've been able to create all the things that i have in my life and i'm extremely grateful for it um and it's i think also very much connected to sagittarius energy is optimism it makes a difference It, it makes a difference between someone who seemingly has it all and how did they create all of these things it's because they're so uh optimistic that things will work out not in a gullible way and innocent way or naive way but sometimes it's the belief right and that's what Sagittarius is all about is having faith believing that it's going to happen and that because you're so clear that it's going to happen it will happen you don't know how but there's that deep faith in knowing that it will happen whatever it is that you're creating project wise it is the moment that you have self-doubt that creeps into your beingness and your mind that things will not work out because you there's no believing that it will work out so you're going to manifest exactly what you're 
afraid of. Yeah. Um, and that's the power of the Sagittarius energy is the optimism always like, yeah, it's going to work out. It's like me getting on the plane and knowing clearly I need to catch that flight yeah. no matter what. And that's the in intention behind it's it. It's the intention yeah. that I don't know how I'm going to get there. I don't know what train. I don't understand the whole transit. There's, I've learned that there's many different companies with different transits and they have different ways of managing and, and the ticketing thing but I just learn along the way and because I knew I'm gonna make it to the yeah. airport and yeah. that's true the true lesson of a Sag yeah um that's why Sagittarius is so willing to go on adventures because they know that they're eventually gonna get there they just don't know necessarily how but they're so willing to take that risk and find that very playful to have that freedom mm -hmm. yeah um i'm all about the adventures and the freedom but yeah. then i've got my virgo moon that really like pulls me in <laughs> that's the the skeptic and yeah. the like, but i don't know <laughs> am i gonna make doubt. it am i gonna be there all right is it gonna be okay yeah so that's the day in the life of nixie's head mm -hmm. but um well mimi thank you so much as always for coming on the show and uh, i really love how much I learned from you and also just the response that we get from you being here. Just know that you are so loved for Thank being you. here and it really just kind of brings us all back to, you know, kind of the ground. Like we, we talk very grounded in the approach of astrology. Mm -hmm. I think the way we, we navigate this and I think that it becomes really relatable. So you're awesome. Thanks Thank for you. being here and we love you guys. I love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, my Mimi, why don't you shout out where everyone can find you? Maybe they want to book a, you know, you're going to be coming out with some some really cool, cool stuff, stuff soon. But yes. Or even just an astrology reading. If you guys have been ever had one before, Mimi's really great. She she always knows my shit like before I even do. She came over here. She's like, oh, yeah, that's because blah, blah, blah. Your Saturn's in here. And I'm like, I don't even, how do you even know that? But so that's kind of the astrology. I'm prepared. She She's prepared. <laughs> oh, man. Mimi is definitely prepared. She's helped me get prepared in life for sure. Yeah. So, so you can find me on Instagram uh, at exalted, I-G-Z-O-L-T-E-D. And then my website is the same, uh, www.igzoltedcom All right. Well, go check her out. Thank you all for tuning in. I love you. I see you. I hear you. Bye for now. Bye.